Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome to this lesson. This video is to understand the major and minor key system. Now, what is a key, right? Why does this even matter? Why, why are you guys even here and why am I teaching this? Now, this is about music and music is about writing songs for other people to listen to and everybody wants to write the best songs so they can actually become a music artist, make lots of money, help a lot of people and it's either to help people or helping people and the fact you're responsible, it's got your name on it so you know if that wasn't the case why would people try when writing music, a lot of people don't but everybody has a desire to try and write some good material now, how do we do that, right? That's what I'm here to show you. Now, a key, right, is what you need. You need a, a key, right, to write a song, okay? Now, there are 12 notes that we have on our instruments, on our pianos, guitars, violins, horns, saxophone, whatever. Uh, we have 12 notes C, C sharp, D D sharp or E flat E, F, F sharp, G G sharp or A flat A, A sharp or B flat and B it's just 12 notes, right? they're the 12 notes that we have C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B right, that's 12 okay, now a musical key is a group of notes that work well together and there is the major and minor keys right so there's multiple different groups of notes and they contain an arrangement of seven right instead of twelve so what I'm saying is you need a key to write a song so if you have a key what it will be is a group of seven notes out of the total of 12 that you have to choose from on a guitar for example right and those seven notes are what is going to give you your music that sounds good if you write a song see that's the thing the problem is if you use any note on your instrument um, I'm just going to get my guitar here and I'm just going to play you any notes right so I'm not in a key I'm not using a group of seven notes I'm just gonna use any note that I feel now if somebody who's never played guitar before picked up a guitar and say they could actually play it but they didn't know anything about it that's what it would sound like because I can play it and I'm trying to show you what it sounds like when you don't have a clue what you're doing which is what happens when you just play any notes it doesn't make music and not only that from actually doing this I kind of realized everything you would do would sound like this now a lot of you will be thinking hold on Chris I write music all the time and it sounds good and it doesn't sound like that and just because you are specifically playing music that sounds like that doesn't mean that you can justify teaching this lesson the thing is most people when they write music without knowledge of music theory or keys right what they are doing is just doing what I'm teaching you right now except for they just didn't have the instructions they didn't have the knowledge they didn't have the control so what I mean is say you need to get to a location right and you're given directions that would be the equivalent of what I am doing right here now say you didn't have directions right that location still exists and it's still possible that you can go there you can you can still get there right but you have no control over how fast you're gonna get there exactly how you're gonna do it or if you're even gonna get there at all I mean the odds are you probably won't I mean there's a good chance you're not gonna get there if you don't know how to right and that is why people who don't know their theory 
and I've seen it before with my own eyes, my own colleagues, course mates. They say, oh, I've got writer's block and all this, or I feel uninspired, I can't, or whatever it is they're saying. It's because they have no control over what they're doing. So they just have to rely on luck in order to get to where they're going, right? Because they'll be just playing the guitar, they don't know what they're doing, and if they do come up with something, it's by coincidence, it's luck. And it will then just be what you would have been able to arrive to if you just had the knowledge in the first place. But the, the issue isn't even the, how long it takes or whatever, like the efficiency, it's just the fact you have no control. If you're trying to do a job for somebody and they say, I need this in a week, you can't just hope that you'll come up with something good in a week. You, if you have this knowledge, you can write whenever you want. That's what composers do. You just write, you, you're the person who provides the service. I need a song. Boom, here it is. Boom, here it is. Boom, here it is. I know how to do this because this is what I do. This is what I've been taught by Mr. Christopher McLaren. Right? So that is why we are doing this. Now, I was saying you need a key to writing a song. And what it will be is a group of seven notes. So that means it will be seven notes, right, out of the 12 that we have out of the C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, right? Now, there are a major key for every note that there is. That means that there is a group of seven notes and then there'll be another 11 groups of seven notes. Because I'm saying there are 12 notes that we have and there is a major key, in actual fact, for all of these notes that we have, right? And then there is also 12 minor keys, but I will get to that. So what this means is there is, for each note, a group of friends that it likes. Right? It has a major key for each note. So there is a D major group, there is an F major group, you know, there's a A major group. So it's just this note, for example, A major, this key, again it's seven notes, has that's these are its friends, right? That's why it is the seven notes group that it is. And that and that is how when you pick a group of seven notes to write music in, it actually writes music because when you use a group, one of these keys, it makes music simple as. Now, all keys sound different and that is how you stop your music from sounding the same because if you just write I say a song in C major, then you write your next song in D major, it won't sound the same because each key, each group of notes has a different personality, right? But instead of it being a personality, it's a sound equivalent, a different tone, a different tonality is what it's called. Um, so it's a different musical setting, a different listening environment. It sounds different. One might sound like heaven. One might sound like a forest. One might remind you of an ocean. Right, that, that's, that's the point of it, right? Um, and that's why you would actually want to explore all these different keys. But obviously you need to actually know about, you know, I haven't actually said anything. I haven't actually taught you anything, really. I've just kind of gave you the context and the justification as to why you need to learn this. Right, so we have our 12 notes. So first things first. Okay, you're saying that I need to pick a key to write a song. I want to write a song today and I need a key. All right, so you're saying these are the, the, the seven groups of notes. I just noticed there's a, a one there. It just shows that these are the notes and then it just it's just the same again. It's just the seven notes, whatever key you're in. So say you want to write a song in C major, okay? I'm sure without this, or at least I would say for you, your first question would be, how do I know what notes would be in this group? Right, how would I work it out? You're saying that every note that we have has a major group and a minor group. So for example, there's C major and C minor. There is C sharp major and C sharp minor, right? 
so how do we how would I actually have known this right there is a way to work it out which is what the major scale spelling is if you want to work out any major key and then the minor scale spelling to work out any minor groups or notes now all the major groups of notes um, it is sort of seen that they all sound happy but like I said they all have a different personality you can have two different people that are quite peppy two happy people but you can still see that they're totally different people and it's exactly the same in these two different creations you have two different keys and in that example you have two different people it's the same thing right so um, say you want to play in C major you start with the C it's like like I say each note has a group like okay so we want to work out C major um, in order to do it we need to understand what this is now there's this thing over here that says T equals tone which is two notes and S equals semitone which is one note right this note here is where you start because that's your starting note right I'm saying all these have a group of notes that it works well with and we're trying to work out what are the other notes that I'm supposed to use so I can actually get on with this right so I can actually start writing my song this letter here is the first thing you need to pay attention to it's a T which means tone which means two notes so to find out the second note we need to find all the seven notes in, in the key that we want right you go up by two notes that is what you're supposed to do that is what this means this T is signifying to you that you need to go up two notes in order to find out the second note of C major if you are in G major, if you if you say, okay, I want to write a song in G major, Chris McLaren said that G has either a G major group or a G minor group, right? And I want to work out the major one because I want to write a happy song and I'm curious to see what the key of G major sounds like, see if it sounds good, see if it sounds better than my last song, whatever, or see if it sounds bad and never use it again, right? And don't forget, you, you, there's different genres of music and different keys on good for different genres so you, the experimentation is literally limitless so say C C major we want to work out C major as I say and there's this T it says tone two notes so you have to go up two notes now please I mean you can see it here but the order of the notes if you don't know the order of just the way that notes go up like on a piano or a guitar just google it or write it down like i say i'll say it once more c c sharp d d sharp e f f sharp g g sharp a a sharp b that's all the notes and then after that it goes again c c it just keeps going um right so we know that going up two notes from c takes you to a d right so we have now successfully worked out the second note in the group that we want to write our song in in this case c major right but that's no good because we still need to find a lot of other notes so then we go to this T here and again it's the same thing it says it's two notes if you see a T it means two notes if you see an S it means one note so going up from D we need to go up by a tone which is two notes so you go up D sharp and you go up again to E so then you've figured out that the third one in C major is E so we've now figured out three so we've used this one we've used this one this is the only this is the only thing that sort of the challenge with working out keys you might lose where you are but practice makes perfect and you can just start again and if you worked it out correctly it'll be quicker it's like oh yeah t oh yeah d and then it's like a tone oh yeah t a, a tone up from dz yeah 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 all right so here we're back here again okay so that only took you like a few seconds to get back to where you were right but now we have an s an s is one note one note up from an E is an F, right? And you just keep going. A tone up from an F is a G, F sharp, G, that's two notes, right? And then we go up another tone, up to an A, G, G sharp or A flat, goes up to an A. And then you've got another tone, which takes you up to an A sharp, an a sharp or a B flat. And then you have one more S, right? Which then takes you back to the C 
sorry, yeah, like when you go up to the T with this one here, sorry, I said A, A sharp or B flat, and then you go up again to the B, and then from B you have this S, right, which takes you back to where you started. Like you see here, it takes you back to where you started. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. T, T, S, T, 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 S. That is the scale spell. Now, say you wanted to write a song in C sharp major. You start with C sharp, because that's the, the, its note, C sharp, C sharp major, it's in the name. Right, that's its group. You start with the C, that's a starting point. Right, and again, it's the same thing. You go up a tone, right, it takes you to a D sharp, which is the same as an E flat. Going up two notes from a from a C sharp, it takes you up to a D and to a D sharp. Right, now I'm only using this side just because it tells you the order of the notes, just to kind of show you, oh, you're going up two notes, here it is, you can visually see it. This like um, column has nothing to do with working out these all you need to work out any major group of notes is this right you don't have to cross reference all this like what is this I have no idea what this grid means like literally that has nothing to do with it I'm just telling you to start off with you know I know how I'm trying to teach and this is where we're at right now so as you can see, going from C sharp to D sharp, up a tone, and you gotta go up another, another tone. So you gotta go up two notes. So that takes you to an E, and then to an E sharp. It's just the exact same again. But all you've done is gone up one note to start with. That's because C sharp is one note above C. You started on a note that's one note higher, right? So it's the same thing again. I mean, say if you want to go into E major, you start with E, go up a tone, takes you to an F sharp, go up another tone, takes you to a G sharp, you know, because you've got to go to a G, then to a G sharp. It's the same thing. This works out every, all the 12 major keys, okay? Now, sort of what I was saying before, how like, all you're doing is working out these keys using this code. But what I want to show you is, this is the point of the grid, right? And this sort of then comes back to understanding the system. So you can actually visualize it and not just know it as, oh, this is this music malarkey that's really complicated, that's been made up like hundreds of years ago. and it's something we're trying to understand now in order to just write a song that I want to write. It's really simple and it's a set system that's meant to be understood. And it's the same with learning a language. It's not meant to be annoying, a hassle. It's something that's meant to be understood so people can communicate efficiently, right? This system, music occurred naturally, right? But just by complete coincidence, it is still this concise system as if it's been made by humans for that purpose, for it to be something that can just be utilized very easily in order to achieve a result, right? And I want to show you this system, show you how it all fits like some sort of sequence, some sort of jigsaw that's not threatening and it's really easy to understand and visualize once you can actually well, once you've learned all the details. So, if you work out C major, you've then worked out a, a, a major key, right? Because C major is a major key. It's one of the major keys out of the 12 that we have. And the reason why there's 12 major keys is because there's 12 notes and there's a major key for every note. So there's 12 major keys, right? Now, C sharp major, I said that C sharp is one note above C. So, say if you want to work out, if you say, like you've worked out C major, just, just you've just done it, whatever, right? Uh, and I've told you what it is, and you can see it right here. For the sake of it, or for the sake of learning, right? Let's look at C sharp major again. You start one note above C, and then you work out 
the, the key, C sharp major, using the same code as before. Every note that you find in either a major or minor key is only ever one or two notes apart because the way you work them out only includes um, spaces of one or two notes, intervals of one or two notes, right? They're only ever two or one note apart, depending on whether it's a tone or a semitone, right? Now, this spelling, if you worked out any of these, you have to use this, and it's the same code every time. Now, the only thing that's different between C major and C sharp major is the fact that you started one note above it. And then you worked out all the C sharp major using the same spelling. Now, what that means is every note is exactly the same, but it has been raised by one note because you started one note higher and then just went up the same spaces as before. So that meant every other note was one note higher. Say you had a sequence, which was one, three, and five. If you raise the first one, sorry, the first note, to a two. So instead of it being one, it's now two. Similarly to C, then to C sharp, it's just going up by one note. If you've gone up by one and you use the same sequence, instead of those notes being one, three, five, they then become two, four, six, and then three, five, seven. It's the exact same thing. It is the same sequence, but you started one note above, which then brings everything up by one. Because, it, because they're all built the same, okay? Now, you can see this with the graph. All these notes just go up by one note, no, no matter where they are or what key it is. Now, say if you're in C major and then you look at the notes of G major, they're gonna be different, right? Like an A has nothing to do with D. I mean, they're quite far apart. I mean, without me working it out, I'd say that, that, you know, that's like five or six notes apart. But that's because you've gone, that, that starting note has jumped up by, again, that many notes. I mean, let's work it out. Uh, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. So you can actually know that G major, every note in G major is basically seven notes higher than the ones in C because it starts seven notes higher. And again, it's just spelt using the same. Even if you can't wrap your head around I don't get how just because you're using the same code, it means that it's all the same, but just up one note because you started on one note, up one note, sorry. Uh, even if you don't understand that, it doesn't matter because it just shows that all these groups are just the same thing. But the only reason why they go up a note is just because you started up a note, right? But it, it just kind of then shows that this isn't something that it's just a bunch of nonsense put together. It's something that you can actually see. I mean, that is everything. That is how you work it out. Those are the notes. And you can see that it's like this friendly system of they just go up and over every time. Right? Now, you can see here that this number six, the sixth note in any key that you play is highlighted in red. Now, over here in the minor key, so now we're moving on to the minor keys. All the minor keys sound sad, but again, they all sound different. And then I've, I've wrote every single one of my pieces in minor keys. I love how minor keys sound. And as I say, I write in different minor keys, so all my songs sound different. Um, so I can achieve the sort of settings that they portray. Now, these are all in red. And then you can see them here in the number one column, the same values, the same notes, but now they represent the first note in all the minor keys. Now, what that means is, see, you can kind of see what I'm trying to teach you here. That there's like these connections, and once you understand, once you have your head around everything, uh, there's nothing left to know, and you have a great comprehension um, of, of the system. So what I'm saying is here, if you just rewrote uh, any, like these major keys from the sixth note, yeah, from the sixth note basically, um, you then achieve whatever minor key that is. So what I mean is 
if say for example C major this red one is an A so that means I'm saying all of these will be the minor keys if you rewrote them from this point onwards so instead of from one to one it goes from like six back to six right so what I'm saying is you take this A and you rewrite it from A to A that would be six you know going back round to, to six because it goes A B C D E F G A A B C D E F G A right it goes back six round back to six but you just worked out the key of A minor without even doing anything you just looked at the chart what I'm saying is in every major key there exists a minor key and every note has a major key and every note has a minor key so if every major key has a minor key in it then that means with all the major keys you also know all the minor keys right so the only issue is without this resource this piece of paper um, you might not know what say if in F major what its relative minor key is the relative minor keys are like is the minor key that is within um, the major key I'm saying that within every major group of notes there is one minor key right and to use it you just rewrite it from the sixth note and then you have the minor key right in C major there is not the B minor key there is not the C sharp there is not the E it is just the A because it is just the sixth note in C major rewritten there is only one sixth value in C major there is only one sixth pitch in C sharp major so there is only one minor key within each major key right but you might not know what that is from memory but with this grid you can see them all being rewritten and then you can also see because it goes six seven one and one uh, here in the major keys is your you know your starting notes which are two notes above right as you can see here you know C C C sharp C sharp D D you know the three notes above which is why when you rewrite them the 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 roots of the major ones are then you know two notes above it just like they are here so then you could even reverse this again you could go from a minor just pull this back again uh, uh, go and start playing your music starting on c and use the note c d e f g a b instead of it starting on a you know you start your for, for, for you to make your music sound like the key that it's in you always need to start it on that note so for example if you're writing a song in c major don't start it on e don't start it on f don't start it on g start it on c and end your melody or your chord progression or whatever your music on that same note because i don't know if you've heard of modes but every pitch in major keys um represents a mode so even the first one uh is a mode right so Ionian Dorian I didn't really pronounce that right but it doesn't matter Ionian Dorian uh, Phrygian Lydian Mixolydian uh, Aeolian and Locrian right now for you to play modes are just different keys it's how you get a different tonality a different setting like I say all the 12 major keys have a, have a setting all the minor keys have a setting uh, there are 12 Phrygian keys, there are 12 Mixolydian keys, there are 12 Locrian keys, and to, and to do that, for, for all the um, major keys, right, no matter which major key you're in, if you base it around the first note, you're in Ionian, which is major, they basically just took the major one and it, it, was, it was originally called Ionian, and then they changed it to major, I don't know why, it's probably because they all the, um, the Ionian keys sounded good or whatever um, so they became major and like this one over here Aeolian the sixth notes became minor but then all of these still had their old names Dorian uh, see you, you remember it like if Dora plays like me all's lost 
So it's like Ionian if Dora Dorian plays Phrygian Lydian like me, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Alls, Lost, Locrian. Now I'm saying you have to in a major key, right? Uh, at, well, yeah, in a major key, you have to start and end on this first note because that's what makes it sound like major, which is Aeolian, the first mode, right? If you want to then play in D Dorian, you just start on D and use the notes in uh, C major. So what it would be is rewritten starting from D, so it would actually be D, E, F, G. It's just rewritten like all this stuff over here, because like I say, even the minor keys, it's just, a, it's just a mode. It's Aeolian mode, right? This is Ionian mode, which is the major ones, uh, which is why I'm saying that you have to, if you're in C major, start and end on that one. Otherwise, you'll be playing in some modes and you won't have the sound that you think you're playing. Um, so that's why uh, even in the minor keys, again, uh, it's just the same thing rewritten, but from the sixth note, and then you actually get the sound of the Aeolian keys, which are the minor keys, right? Uh, yeah, so these are all the minor groups, and like I say, it's just rewritten from here. And if you have this information, you can essentially figure out any minor key without doing anything. But it doesn't, I mean, that's just like a fun fact. This is the education that you're getting from the nature of this video, which is to try and explain like the, the ins and outs of the system to show that it all makes sense and it's actually quite logical and um, it's just, these sort of major groups and then if you want to play in the minor groups literally all of those keys actually exist within the major keys um, because all of the major keys are just a mode and then if you want to play in any Dorian keys which is if Dora Dorian you rewrite any one of these keys from the second note again uh, so it, it's kind of sorry saying rewriting these from here again doesn't really make sense what what i mean is so like c major it's hard to show you if i actually been able to change the notes myself but on here but you know this would read like i say it would be d e f like say if i was here right i wanted to write in these these would be the the phrygian keys if dora plays phrygian right if you rewrote the the all these third notes put them back to the start and had these keys all rewritten from the third point all the way back to the third point and you start on the third like this new new start third point and you end on that third point you're, you're playing in E Phrygian you're playing in E Sharp Phrygian uh, F, F Sharp Phrygian whichever one it is that you're choosing to use whichever row whichever key whichever group um, so one last thing minor scale spelling you can just say if you want to write in a minor key say it's like okay i want to i want to know what e minor sounds like um okay you start with e like i say just like before in the major keys again it's, the, it's your boss note if you want to work out e major you start with e if you want to work out e minor you start with e right and then again it's the exact same rules you, you just go up by a tone because that's the first thing that you encounter Right, and then you go up again with an S. So it's like, okay, E to F sharp is two notes. We can kind of actually see that there because these are the notes going up in like an order, all the 12 notes that we have. I mean, these are going up in order as well, but um, I usually, in my head, I always see it from C to C. And then obviously this is like A to A because it's like this stuff rewritten. Um, so I'm kind of like using this as like the reference, but as you can see again, these are all the notes going up in order um, So yeah, going back to E minor, E to F sharp, and then to G, right, you can see it's like You can kind of as well like get back to where you were by looking at the S's because they kind of stick out because there's not as many So if you can see here that, oh yeah, there's only one space from there to there And we're at the, the, the start, so I'm probably here <laughs> So it's like, oh yeah, we went up the semitone, okay, yeah, we need to go up this T now. Alright, we're going to go to A, 
you know, you've gone up G sharp to A, then you go to A to B, so it's A sharp to B, um, and then it goes to C, which is this S here. And again, you can see here, it's already written, I forget that this is here, you can you don't even need to work this out. Um, and then it goes up to D, which is your last, well, no, sorry, <laughs> second last tone. And then you go back on another tone to E, which, there you go, you've worked out E minor. Um, and that is it, guys, it's kind of like, here's your spelling to work out any of the major keys, um, all, all the 12 notes have a major key and then within that all the minor keys exist within it so technically you wouldn't even need to work them out again and you have them written here so you literally know which relative minor key is within what major key and like it's just the same notes that that's kind of the benefit it's, it's the same notes so you don't have to work it out it's like if you know if you want to work in D minor um, and you know that that's the relative minor of F major and you know the notes in F major you just write the notes out starting from D and back, back round to D uh, and you have D minor look D all the way round to D and it, it's, it's uh, the, the same notes um, yeah and that's it and then if you want to specifically work out a minor scale just like the major scale just use the spelling and oh yeah that's the, that's the one point you know how I say how like um these are just rewritten it's like they're the same notes so if you worked out these from this and these are the same notes you know you think hmm hang on a minute is this something similar and it is because look here that is what is the you know going from the sixth pitch to the next one as you can see, like from here, B to C is an S, right? And this T here is this A going to the B, or it's this A sharp going to the B sharp, or the B going to the C sharp, you know, B, C, C sharp, this T. This is the sixth value, and then it goes round. What do we have down here? Oh, look, it's that rewritten from the sixth letter. Which I think is absolutely crazy. <laughs> so yeah, like it reflects that that is what it is. It is just being because don't forget these notes were built from this, and then this is just rewritten. So naturally, it would rewrite this as well. So you don't even need to remember this it, again. All the minor keys are just rewritten from like the certain point. At, well, the sixth point, sorry. <laughs> um, but the thing is, like I say, there's only one specific minor key within each one um, so you know say if you didn't have this resource with you and you want to play in G minor I mean I'm not looking at the screen right now I don't know what major key that is in so for me I would work out that key using the minor scale spelling and you know that that as well just as a fun fact just something to help you out that that minor scale spelling again as you know just just to make that connection that it's it's just the same thing as the major one but just from the sixth pitch but if you're just trying to work out G minor because like I say I'm not looking at the screen I can't see it and I don't know uh, what major key it's in so I can't rewrite its relative major key from the sixth note uh, you have to use this code or also which is my favorite which is what I actually do you can take a major key so say in this case G major, like because like like I'm going with the same example. I want to work out G minor, right? You can take the major key and flatten the third pitch, the sixth and the seventh. Flattening the note means putting it putting it down by one note, right? You flatten it. If you sharpen a note, it means you sharpen it by one note. It means it goes up by one note. Um, so. Uh, this third one, right, would actually be a B flat, which is an A sharp. B flat, right? Uh, and then this, and you can, and you, it says the numbers here. So, I mean, I was just thinking, oh, wait, which one is it? Oh, yeah, six and seven, G major, uh, E. So that needs to be an E flat. What have we got? E flat. Um, and then S sharp, that should be an F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing. B flat, E flat, F, and everything else is the same. That's how I work out minor keys actually, because it's shorter than. So I, I usually either know some of like the major keys off by heart, or 
I don't know, I've used this code so many times I can kind of get through it pretty quick. Uh, so it's kind of like, uh, you know, D major, I know that off by heart. So then it's literally just putting that to an F, putting that to B flat and putting that to C. Uh, where's D minor? Yeah, yeah. So it's like F, B flat and C. There you go. That, that's another way of doing it. That's like your two ways of working out minor scales. Um, aside from simply rewriting it uh, from the sixth pitch, like I, I know, I actually do know that the relative minor of G major is E minor. Uh, and I know the notes in G minor, uh, sorry, G major and E minor. So I can just, starting on E, rewrite the key of G major from its sixth point. Right, so I can do that. So I can literally work out E minor from either rewriting G major from its sixth point, uh, because it's the relative minor key in G major. It, it is the one minor key that is in G major, the specific minor key within G major. Or I can start on E, use the spelling to work out E minor, to work out all these notes using the spelling. Or I use E major. I do also know the notes of E major off by heart. And then you just turn the third, sixth and seven down by one note. So that would become a, a, a G, that would become a C and that would become a, a D leaving only this F sharp as the only sharp in the key of E minor, which it is, right? You can see that um, that G, C and D, uh, where are we? Yeah, G, C and D, they've been flattened, right? And that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want to know anything else. Uh, yeah, thank you for the support, guys. Take care and God bless.